Hi, in this video we're going to see some of the new features that are available in PyCharm 4.0. One of the most demanded features has been support for IPython notebooks and we're now happy to say that we fully support this inside of PyCharm where we can actually edit cells and run them. While editing we do have code completion and we can click on every individual cell and run it. So for instance here I can change this value to 10 and run this code. PyCharm automatically takes care of starting the server for us and stopping it once we close the project. The only thing that we do need to specify is the project interpreter as well as the URL for the server. The PyCharm debugger has grown more powerful. We've merged our debugger code with that from the original PyDev repository, which means a lot of joint improvements. We've also added a brand new attach to process feature. So now you can connect the debugger to any running Python process and debug in attached mode. All you need to do is go to the tools menu, click attach to process, find the actual process we want to attach to, click OK. The debugger then attaches to the process and from there we can set a breakpoint and evaluate any of the expressions. We can see here how the breakpoint stops and we can examine the variables as well as do a step by step trace. Finally we've added support for referring objects. When debugging we can right click on any variable and select show referring objects. And this shows all of the referring objects for that specific variable. We can also now debug templates in Jinja. Here we can see that we've set some breakpoints in a template for Jinja and we are able to step through and evaluate all of the different variables. We've also improved support for NumPy. When you're debugging, you can select a variable that's an array, right click it and select view as array. And this provides us a much more pleasant view to see that actual variable. Here we can change the formatting. So we can say, for example, with three decimal places, we can switch the coloring on and off, as well as slice and dice the array on how many things we want to see. In this version, we also have support for BDD frameworks such as Behave and Lettuce. Here we can see that we have code completion where we can start to type our steps and our different scenarios and then allow PyCharm to execute these easily. Once our steps are defined, we can hit Alt Enter and have PyCharm create the step definition for us. And we can select an existing file or create a new file, which in this case, we're going to go to an existing file. And from there, we can navigate directly to this new test. So we can now fill in the requirements here and have this test run. We can at any point just right click and say run a specific feature. And we can see all of the different scenarios being run inside of PyCharm. On the feature itself, we can also just run it and have those tests executed. We've also made a series of improvements to the IDE. To begin with, when selecting a new project, we're first prompted for the type of project that we want to create. And then based on the project we select, define the actual settings for it. We've also made improvements to the Python console. It now sits in its own tool window, which you can access from view tool windows, Python console. Additionally, what we have also provided is the ability to have this Python console remain open after we run an application. By clicking the show command line afterwards, now when we run the application, the output will remain open and we can access this through the tabs much like any other tool window. Another window that's been added to PyCharm is the ability to see the call hierarchy for a specific method. Due to the complex analysis that we're able to do, even with dynamic languages, we can now provide you with information about the actual hierarchy of calls being done on a specific method. We've also improved support for unmet package requirements. Here we can see that we have a series of packages in our requirements file and PyCharm is prompting us to install the specific requirements. We can click on install requirements and then choose a specific package to install and once done, click install. In addition to specific support for Python and PyCharm, we now have a series of improvements that come with the IntelliJ IDEA platform, including support for gulp files where we can select a task 
and run it from inside the file or use the gulp window. We also have improved support for CSS3, a nicer layout for preferences, a much cleaner preferences window, and support for smart backspace, the ability to detect code styles on the fly and not have to individually configure them for each file. And last but not least, a series of improvements with the database tools. And these are some of the features that are available now in PyCharm 4. Hope you enjoy it.